All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Um, tonight we are in Luke chapter number 19. And before we get started, I'm going to ask if there's anybody that's not asking any questions or speaking, could you please make sure your mics are muted so we don't get any feedback because these studies are recorded. Um, before one more thing before we get started, I notice uh, we have a new name with us tonight, and this is not to embarrass anyone, this is just to allow the group to get to know you. Uh, Larry Smith, if you don't mind, uh, would you introduce yourself, please? Hey guys, I'm uh, Larry Smith. Uh, I was invited to the group a long time ago, and um, uh, I just now made my made myself uh, available to come to the group. Uh, Gilberto invited me a long time ago, um, but I don't think I was in the right frame of mind to uh, do it back then. But now uh, a lot of things have changed in my life. Um, I just got baptized Sunday and uh, I'm trying to choose more things uh, that's aligned with uh, the kingdom and uh and I'm just trying to see God as much as I can. Hey, man. Well, welcome, Brother Larry. God bless you. And we pray that you continue to come back and study with us as much as time allows. And once again, welcome, welcome. Uh, there was one more uh, Galaxy Tab S4. If you don't mind, would you please introduce yourself to the group? All right. If not, well, welcome anyway, and please come back and continue to study with us as much as time allows. With that being said, once again, we are in Luke chapter number 19. Are there any prayer requests before we get started? Any prayer requests? Yeah. Uh, pray for my um, my wife. So we just funeralized my, my grandmother, as y'all are aware of, but um, uh, my wife's grandmother isn't doing well. She's 83. And her health is deteriorating fast. So um, just keep my family in prayer as, um, you know, potentially we'll be going through it again. Uh, most definitely, Brother Kennedy. Is there anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? Yes, um, uh, brother, brother Green. Um, yes. I don't know what I did, but my name not up there. So I guess that's me. Oh, uh, okay, Sister. Yes, ma'am. There's a way that you would have to type your name in. You know, uh, hopefully, uh, Sister Williams can help you out with that. So when you open it up, you can type your name in and your name will show up. Uh, is there anyone else has any prayer requests before we get started? Yes, please uh, keep me in prayer. Most definitely, Brother Hanyard. Will do. Anyone else? All right, and once again, you know, we had a quick little conversation before we got started, so I want to keep Brother Claude lifted up in prayer as well, because like I said, I understand his situation that he's going through with his back, so I also ask him to keep him lifted up in prayer. Um, if there's no other prayer requests, I'm going to ask Brother Stevenson, if he don't mind, my brother, would you please open us up with a word of prayer? Let's pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we approach your throne of grace and mercy tonight. In the name of Jesus, again, Father, we want to say thank you so much for all your many wonderful, bountiful blessings that you've blessed us with. We understand that we're in the land of the living, dear God, and at this moment, not because we're so good, but God, because of your grace and your mercy that you have shown to us as we slumbered and slept on last night, you protected us. And Father, another opportunity, Father, to straighten up whatever things we may have crooked in our lives, another opportunity to live in this world to bring glory, honor to your holy divine name, and I pray Father, these opportunities, we've learned by now not to take them for granted. Father God, be with our brother Kennedy, dear God, and his wife, as they're dealing with sickness and death in the family. Dear God, just thank you for their, their labor in the Lord. Thank you, brother Kennedy's zeal, his desire. Now, Father God, his example, Father, to want to live for you. And Father God, we just pray, Father, that during these times, dear God, that we would all look to the hills from where help must come from in moments uh, when we face the greatest enemy we all will face, and that is death. 
I pray, Father, for his wife, who is also pregnant, dear God, and dealing with this travesty, that she would just keep her hand in your unchanging hand, dear God, and understand that nothing happens in this life uh, uh, that's beyond your comprehension and your understanding. And always remember, you care about all your children. Be with our brother Hanyard, dealing with sleep issues, dear God. I thank you, Father, that uh, he's acknowledged, dear God, that he has been prideful. But, Father, he has decided to remove pride. And Father God, to ask, Father, for prayers from your children. And Father God, what a great example of a leader. To understand that he should have long ago asked for prayers. He didn't, but now he, he is doing, Father, what he deems necessary in his conscience. And Father, we ask that you bless him. I pray to Father, the doctors, the nurses, whoever he'll be going to if necessary in the near future will make wise decisions. And Father, you will allow him to have a good night of sleep. And Father, one thing that I do recognize as a child of God and a Christian uh, the world teaches us to count sheep, uh, Father, when we can't sleep. But I pray that Brother Hanyard will learn that we must talk to the shepherd himself. And, Father, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or even think. For Brother Claude, thank you for his age and his wisdom, dear God. You know what he's dealing with in his back. And, dear God, I just pray, Father, that you'll be with the doctors and nurses and the wisdom that they have, uh, that they have received from you. And, Father, restore our dear brother to a good portion of health in his back. Thank you for Brother Smith, dear God. Uh, he's now on this Zoom. Great news. Obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to have him with us on tonight. Uh, thank you, Father, for the good report uh, that he has proven again that there's power in the gospel. He has your spirit. And, Father God, he is now in the kingdom. I pray he will continue to keep his hand in your hand. And, Father, understand that trials and tribulations and suffering will come. But, Father, he's in the right place. And I pray he'll continue to hunger and thirst for righteousness of God. And we'll be here for him to encourage him and strengthen him and answer any questions that he might ask. And the, the question that he asks, we pray the answer he'll be received will not be one of man, but Father, one from your word, rightly divided. Be with your speaker of the hour tonight. For I'll bring to his ready recollection of things that he has prepared, that he might impart them, that when we say the last amen on tonight, we can all with honest hearts say we were glad we took time out of, to be a part of this study. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, Brother Stevenson. And once again, everyone, we are in Luke chapter number 19. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Kennedy. All right. I definitely appreciate y'all for allowing me to once again um, lead this study, uh, Luke chapter 19. And um, I'm going to begin by reading the first 10 verses and then I will break it uh break it down and ask um, others to read as well. But um, uh, Luke 19, starting off with um, Zacharias, um, Zacchaeus, um, is, is extremely uh, powerful because it, we get to learn a little bit about repentance. And we're going to take a trip back to uh, Luke 18 to see the, the differences between Zacchaeus and, and the rich young ruler, because there's a lot of um, um, similarities, but uh, it ended with different uh, directions or um, different avenues, um, which with, with the, the routes that they took. But uh, Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was and could not for the press because he was a little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my good to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And, you know, I want to I want to start off by this. You know, first and foremost, we understand that the tax collectors, they were hated by the Jews. Um, they were hated not only because um, they, they 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 considered them to be uh, traitors or considered them to be people who um, turned their backs on the Jews. 
but they hated them also because they tax more than what the Romans um, um, empire tax uh, uh, the, the, the Jews themselves. So, he, you know, the, a lot of the Jews, a lot of the Pharisees, um, they, they didn't like um, uh, uh, tax collectors. And it tells us here that he was the chief among the publicans um, and he was extremely rich. You know, the thing about it that that, that I find extremely interested um, going into this is how it talks about Jesus understood and 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 even though Zac Zacchaeus was was making haste to to see Jesus, he was trying to do whatever possible. He was a little individual climbing up on the tree just so that way he can get an opportunity to see him. Um, Jesus was expecting it. This is something that that Jesus knew that was to come. And, and Jesus told him, he said, for today, he said, I must stay at your house. It was so this is something that 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 was that was planned to be. This is something that was predestined. Jesus knew that he had to uh, stay at, at his house. And once this once once Jesus made that statement, immediately the Pharisees or the, the people that was in the crowds, they, they they began to begin to be outraged. You know, they started uh, mumbling under their mouths and speaking to themselves because they didn't they couldn't understand how somebody who was supposed to be God sent Jesus for 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 many uh, uh uh, um, passages before would talk about you know the things that he came here to do and we understood that he was healing people on the sabbath day and he was uh um, sitting down with, with 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 sinners and 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 the the pharisees were were criticizing trying to say how can this man be who he said he is and at the same time be sitting down with people like this hanging around with people like this but they continue to miss the mark on what jesus came and at the end you know in verse 10 when he says for the son of man is come to seek and save that which is lost so they continue to to miss the boat on that but one of the things that 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 stood out uh immediately to me was is that you know as as Jesus is sitting down with Zacchaeus and he's talking to him right clearly there there there's there's implications of 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 them speaking he is at his house and this implication of him speaking Zacchaeus uh knowing that he was in the wrong because of things that he had done in the past uh, to because it already uh, laid the foundation saying that that he was uh, um, that 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 he is the type of person who is a is a is a tax collector. So we know that he was taxing the Jews heavenly. Um, it, 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 it brings us to the to the understanding that he clearly saw errors in his ways. And why we know he, he, he saw errors in his ways is because his language when he's talking to Jesus change you know he's seen things like in 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 um in verse uh starting from verse six and when after he come down he said and when they saw it and all murmured and um that he was gone to be a guest with a man the sinners that he has stood and said unto the lord behold lord half of my goods i give to the poor i want to stop there because i want to go over to uh luke chapter 18 um, and if you go to Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 18, we get to read the, 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 the story about the rich young ruler. And, you know, it says, and a certain man in verse 18 of Luke 18, it says, and a certain ruler asks him saying, good master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these I have kept from my youth. So again, this, um, this, um, this rich young ruler, he's acknowledging like, hey, look, Jesus, everything that you're telling me that I must do, I've been doing this. You know, I've been doing this. Now, Jesus, he, he essentially flips the scripts on him and says, okay, now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, ye lack is thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. So he's saying, okay, look, you're, 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 look, Jesus knows, you know, Jesus doesn't need to be told, okay? Jesus understands, he knows who he's dealing with, he knows, and, and he's telling him, okay, you, you're telling me you're, you, you've done all these things, but you lack one thing, and he tells him, get rid of his possessions, distribute it to the poor, and then follow me then. You can be essentially one of Jesus' disciples, follow him. But what happens immediately? 
in verse 23, he says, and when he heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw, and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier to the poor camel to go through the needle of an eye than a rich man to enter into the kingdom. Now, we understand that that the fact that he was sorrowful, you know, was the is 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 to state that he he was troubled. He was told that to give away his possessions and distribute it amongst the poor by Jesus, but he valued his possessions too much to just give it away. See, here Zacchaeus didn't have to be told to do that. Um, Zacchaeus led the information to Jesus. So we see a difference um, in, 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 in contrast on how with the, with the rich young ruler, you know, he was told that he needed to do this and, um, and, and, and then he was sorrowful. Meanwhile, um, Zacchaeus is different. He, he goes to Jesus and say, he said, Jesus, he says, uh, I've given all half of my possession, um, possessions back. Um, he said, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken any from any man by false accusation, again, now look what he's understanding. He's understanding. He's saying, look, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Now, I find that to be um, extremely um, interesting because uh, if, if, in, I, if I'm not mistaken, the giving back a certain percentage, if, if, if you had wronged somebody, it was, it was 20%. It was supposed to be uh, uh, a certain percentage that you had to ensure that you gave back. If we go to Leviticus five um, uh, verses um, 16, I believe it, it, it kind of um, touches over it and gives us an understanding of, 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 of this. So Leviticus five, and verse 16, and verse 16, and it says, and he shall make amends for the harm that he had done in the holy things and shall add the fifth part thereto and give it unto the priest and the priest shall make an atonement for him with a ram of the trespass offering and it shall be forgiven him. So here we have, uh, it talking about when you trespass against somebody, how the process of how you have to give back um, a, 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 a portion. But Zacchaeus says in, in, in 19, in verse uh, in, in, in Luke 19, verse number eight, that he will restore him fourfold. So he has multiplied that. So not only is Zacchaeus willing to 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 to, to give half of his good, but he's saying if I've done anybody wrong on top. He said, I'm willing to give extra because I, I, I understand the errors in my ways and like the and the difference from the, the rich young ruler who his possessions were so valuable to him that, that he went away sorrowful. You know, he was lacking one thing and couldn't give up that one thing. And before he even told him he needs to do this, Zacchaeus already was willing to do this because he understood his errors in his ways he was seeking jesus out he was doing whatever it took um to be able to 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 put himself in position to even be in a position to see jesus but then jesus turned around and say hey look i need you to come down from this tree because today i must be in your house i must be with you and 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 then from there um you know uh he he, he begins to talk to him about uh zacchaeus goes and shows repentance but then from zacchaeus showing repentance what jesus brings to him is salvation he he, he starts to show him his the the the, the path of salvation verse 9 and verse 10 tells us and jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house again jesus told him that he had to be with him today in his house and with zacchaeus already having a repentance heart for the wrongs that he done he didn't necessarily needed to be told he was willing he was ready Jesus tells him that this day salvation has come to your house. And he tells him for as much as he is also a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek to save that which is lost. I open it up at this time for any comments or questions.
Go ahead, Brother Hanyard. See your hand. Yeah, I was just going to note the contrast of mindsets there, um, how you have two men of uh, of of, of uh, same background, having riches, both of them were wealthy, yet one regarded their wealth above his own soul salvation as opposed to the other who thought not only nothing of his wealth, but considered the errors of his ways such that it caused him to go above and beyond um, what was required of him and that he would pay quadruple what he had uh, stolen from individuals. It, it, it speaks to how much more given the latter, we should be like him today. We all are sinful. We all have made mistakes. We all have put things uh, above and beyond what we should. But when we think about Jesus, when we think about God, it should draw everything into perspective, you know, where we're headed, who we belong to, and, and where we're trying to go, such that we discount all of this that we have. I hope I'm making sense. Um, even though this man was uh, found to be wrong, even it was a, a, a common understanding that he was a, a, a legal thief, as some would say, you know, stealing above and beyond. And, and, and he knew it and he knew God knew it. He knew Jesus knew it. But the mindset, it, 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 it rings in my heart, uh, the repentance piece, if you will, how he was able to remove himself or remove uh, himself from his possessions and recognize that there was something greater uh, far beyond what this world can offer. And that was Jesus. That was uh, when I read this, I've read this many times over when I think about that, you know, how wretched of a person he was initially. And then when Jesus comes on the scene and then he says, salvation has come to this house. Wow. That's profound. When the Lord tells you salvation this day is salvation come to this house. Um, that's saying something when the Lord tells you that, you know, in spite of who you were, this day salvation has come to your house. It's just provocative. That's all I had to say. I'm sorry. Thank you. you have to unmute. Go ahead, Brother Stevenson. No, no, that was me. Um, I was just telling you needed to unmute your mic. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say something that Brother Hanger said um, that kind of um, just made me thought about. It's just, you know, for us today, you know, when we wrong somebody and, and rightfully so, once we wrong some from somebody and we repent of our sins, you know, and we know that uh, the Lord, um, you know, removes those from the book and, 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 you know, but for us, you know, there's still some effort, you know, and some things that we have to put in when we wrong somebody, you know, um, uh, in, it, it, we're, we're, we're married. You know, you have a, a brother or sister and, you know, you, you know, you know, you, wh whoever it is, it could be a, a stranger and, and, and you, and you wrong that person and, you know, you, you, you're sorrowful um, and, and, and you repent of your sins. And then, you know, there, th there is still a, there is still, that should be something that should be reflecting from you to show that, that you are in that continuous state and not that you are in the, the person that you was before, you know, um, if, if you're somebody who, you know, for me, I could tell you, uh, in the past, I've had issue, um, you know, in, in my early, in early stages of my marriage, you know, one of the biggest issues was finances. And, you know, that was one of the biggest, uh, stuff that my, me and my wife would get into it. It would be, uh, finances. And, you know, she, she rightfully so felt that the way I, 
treated the situation or would do certain things because of the finances, you know, it was a, you know, it was, it was a, a it could be a betrayal, you know, it can be abuse as um, brother Stevenson taught yesterday in, um, in one of the kingdom clap talking, um, and, 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 you know, we, we, we can, we can show that in so many different ways. And, you know, even though I repented of my sins, I asked her to forgive me, but now I have to show something different than what I was doing before. You know, if I, if I, if I do that and I continue to do the same thing, did I really change? Did I really repent? Was I really sorrowful? Or was I just mad that, you know, maybe I got caught blowing money, you know, or something like that. So, you know, we, when we, when we repent of our sins, that change that, 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 that we supposed to show, you know, it's supposed to reflect, you know, that, and, 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 you know, I almost look at this situation with the rich young ruler. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's not ironic that these go back to back, you know, you got Luke 18 and then Luke 19 that you can draw from both of them. But when I was reading this, I was almost like envisioning it. Like if it was, I know it ain't the same person, but I was envisioning it like, you know, here you have one person who didn't want to give away his goods, who didn't want to give away um, his stuff. He was doing everything well. He was glad that he was doing everything well. And then when Jesus tells him that, hey, look, you're failing in this department, you know, that's where his heart was at. So he wasn't able to change. But here you got Zacchaeus who, who knew that he was doing wrong, but was seeking Jesus out. And then when he had an opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, he was volunteering that information. Hey, um, you know, he's letting, he's, he, he's understanding that he's wrong and I'm giving away half my goods. And then for anybody that I've done wrong, that, I, that, that I've um, purposely done wrong, I'm, I'm going to give them four, four times fold, four times fold back. He wasn't making no excuses for what he did. He just knew that he had to amend for what he did wrong and he was willing to do it. He was willing to put his money where his mouth was literally and 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 Jesus um you know responded with you know today salvation has been in, is, has come to this house. So brother Stephen, I, I knew you had your mic on mute. You was gonna say something. No, but no good teaching, uh brothers. And another comparison I see in the stories in the one the rich man in Luke 18 and 19 is the one in Luke 18, brothers, thought his self-righteousness was enough to get him into the kingdom. And that's what we have to be uh mindful of you know our self-righteousness does not get us in there's no works that we and you and i can do to to merit heaven remember and i'll say this till i die people don't go to heaven because of sin people go to heaven because they won't repent of sin i'm gonna say that again people don't go to heaven because of sin you go to uh, uh i mean people won't go to hell because of sin forgive me they won't go to, they'll go to hell because they won't repent of their sin this is why the Lord sent John the Baptist. You remember earlier in Luke 3? Turn there. One of the things that Luke 3 and John the Baptist day, remember you had the publicans that would come to John the Baptist baptism. And John the baptizer in Luke 3, 12 says, then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? Now remember, Zacchaeus is a publican. Now, this is what John the Baptist is going to tell them. He said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed you. In other words, be honest in your business. And what John the Baptist was requesting of them is to show meat for repentance. And this is what Zacchaeus is doing. He's showing fruit, meat for repentance. He knows he's done wrong, as Brother uh, Gilbert has said. And so now he is doing he's doing something about it we have to remember that's why jesus came when you go back and look in luke 5 32 as we've already read as we studied that chapter one verse luke 5 32 uh, give us a reason why jesus said he came he gives it out of his own mouth matter of fact let's start with 31 jesus answered said unto him they that are whole need not a physician but they that are sick i came not to call the righteous but notice what he came to do but sinners to repentance now, if you don't think you sin, you don't mess up, that you don't need Jesus, then you're not going to repent. You're going to, if you've made idols in your heart, like the rich man in Luke 18, he's made money his idol. This is why he puts it before Jesus. He feels that his keeping of the five commandments, which I don't believe at all that he kept all those perfect anyway, even though he says that, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
And so he says that he's done good from his youth. But the idea is we all need Jesus in order to be saved. No doubt. Oh, there's none unrighteous, brothers and sisters. No, not one. And so when G Jesus comes to Zacchaeus' house, as Brother Gilbert just said, he must go there. This is already preordained. The people murmured. That's the key. You know who murmurs about Jesus being around sinners? People who don't see that people need other people need Jesus and they need Jesus. That's who murmurs. And if you and I have that heart, we will not be in the kingdom. And so Zacchaeus understood it, and therefore salvation came to his house that day. Uh, thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Um, our Brother Thomas uh, Hanyard, if you will, could you read 11 through 15 for me, please? Uh, certainly. Um, Luke 19, 11. Through 15? Yes, sir. And as, <clears throat> excuse me, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he, had, when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trade. Thank you very much, brother, for that. Um, and look, <laughs> we know we know who this this parable is about. You know, it's a direct reflection. And um, actually, if you turn to Daniel chapter seven, um is <laughs> you know, you kind of in, in Daniel 7, verses 13 through 14, you kind of get a, a brief understanding of this. Uh, prophecies is being fulfilled here. You know, in Daniel 7, 13 through 14, it says, And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So, you know, um, I looked at that as a, as a, as a, uh, as a reference. So here, here Jesus is, is talking about a nobleman and he's telling, he's telling us that this nobleman is, is, is going away into a far country to receive a kingdom and then return. Now, you know, if you, if you notice there's, there's a difference a slight difference you know jesus he's not saying that he's going away to a far country and returning and then receiving the kingdom you know he kingdom and upon his return uh can y'all hear me okay um just gotta re we know that that he he received that he he received that he already received the kingdom that jesus already had access to the kingdom but in this in this in this parable you know he it, it it mimics exactly uh how Jesus journey has been you know the, the countrymen the people won't receive Jesus you know they don't want to they don't want him to rule over them you know the the type of he's not he's saying that he is the one that 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 was that is supposed to come but yet they are looking for a physical king someone who can rule and and bestow on them the 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 the, the power that and and that they that they believe they deserve you know they're not looking for for something spiritual they're looking for something physical um they wanted him to come and and be mighty and 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 cast out people from the lands like you know to remove the, the romans they they wasn't looking at what jesus was bringing and what he was promising they wanted something more physical. And, and then and so the citizen doesn't doesn't like him. They don't want him to rule. But he has he has uh um uh 10, 10, 10 servants that that given something to them, and he's telling them to multiply what I'm giving to you. 
So he's given his servants something. So, you know, you look at that, Jesus has his, 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 his apostles and, you know, his, his, his apostles, he has given his apostles something and he is, and what he's given his apostles, they are supposed to do something with his as well. So you see the contrast um, between the parable of this nobleman and um, I don't want to uh, uh, get ahead of myself. So I'm going to stop there. Um, for any questions or comments um, before we go on to the next verses. Yeah, what he, what, what Jesus in, in, in verse 13 to the, and again, we, we don't want to over, you know, over spiritualize or emphasize, you know, the 10 represents the apostles or, or you know, or, or anything else, but we understand we're servants. And, and, and he says, occupy till I come. And notice he gave all 10, he gave them 10 pounds and said, and so he, this is different than the, the, than the talents that we see in Matthew 25. You know, if you're in the kingdom, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this, all of us, all of us have uh, one gift, uh, the same message that has the power to do what it's designed to do if we use it. And again, it doesn't mean that when we use it, everybody's going to obey, but we are still to occupy. That word occupy means to trade. It means to work. It means to be busy. That's what we have to do in the kingdom. You have to take the gospel and you have to use it. There is no excuse whether you're a male or a female. And, and, and so when he says he called his servants, delivered them the, the pounds, he said, them, I need you to occupy till I come. And then he's going to come back. And you look at verse 15, as Brother uh, Kennedy read, he had given them the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading, which is the same word as, as occupy. Because God's word will not come back void, brothers and sisters. It will do what it's designed to do, you know, whether people obey or don't, don't obey. Even with Moses and Aaron, God's word didn't come back void just because Pharaoh didn't obey it. He did exactly what it's designed to do. And so we're in the kingdom. We need to get out there and go to work. No excuse for being lazy, brothers and sisters. No excuse for, for not sharing the gospel to those that are in our environment. We've been saved. We have grace. And we need to give other people the opportunity to receive the same grace. And as Brother Kennedy go through the rest of this, we're going to see what's going to happen if you and I don't do it. Uh, Sister uh, Denise, if you're able, can you read 16 through 21? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, 15 through what number? What verse? Through 21. Okay. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, Oh, wow. What's that? I'm sorry. Um, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so, so here we have, we have the nobleman. He's going away to a far country. Um, and he's going to receive uh, the kingdom in return. And then before he leaves, he he gives his his servants uh, a minya to make money while he's away. Now, a minya is like uh, I, I looked I was as I was looking it up. It is considered to be um, a, a, a certain a certain amount of wages. So, you know, you can look at it between three to four months of your wages. So that's the 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 amount of money that 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 um that this nobleman has given so that way they can go ahead and trade um to make to 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 multiply it. 
And as 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 Jesus, oh, not Jesus, as the nobleman is is going to to um to going away to receive the kingdom and then return, you know, he he sends out his servants, his ten servants, to go ahead and 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 do the, the bidding that he asks them to do, which is multiply. And then when he comes back. Um, he calls, he calls for them to come back to see what it is that they did with this minute. What it did, was it that they did with their money? How did they trade it? So here you have, you know, uh, some that, that did the, the, what they were supposed to do, whether they, 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 they made it come back twice fold or, you know, uh, you know, uh, three times or, or four times. But the, 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 the one, the one that I want to, uh, really, really focus on is, uh, the one um that comes in about verses 21 to 20 um to 20 to 21 and i'm going to read it again and it says and another came saying lord behold here is thy pound which i have kept laid up in a napkin for i feared thee be thou um because thou art uh it says an austria man and thou takest up thou latest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow so when I when I look that up, um, that is that is to say that that, you know, they they feared this nobleman, you know, uh, just like um, any servant will fear a master that that has uh, a control or power over you. And so because he feared him and he didn't want to lose what he had, he did nothing with it. And what's 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 what what I what I draw from this you know, and, and I know, um, brother Stevenson said, um, we don't want to get, uh, carried away with, you know, um, correlating this to, um, uh, Jesus and his, his apostles. Um, but like what he was saying, uh, when he was saying, uh, we, 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 regardless of your man or female, we're charged to spread the gospel. You know, it is not, it is not just, uh, the, the the preacher on Sunday, um, that is that is you know, teaching the gospel. You teach the gospel sometimes by having a conversation with a coworker at work. You may be at work, and a person may ask you a general question, and you have an opportunity to to share the gospel with that with that individual. And in this sense, this person did nothing with what they received from the nobleman. So when I was looking at this. You know, I immediately started looking at it from a standpoint of people who have the gospel, have have knowledge with the gospel, but won't do nothing as far as sharing it or won't put themselves in position to have a better understanding to share the gospel. You know, we everybody has different levels of learning and understanding. But that doesn't mean that you don't continue to strive to be better and know better. So that way, when that position, when you're in that position, you can be better prepared. And oftentimes when you're talking to somebody, they'll 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 use the excuse of of not knowing. But it's like we all have something that we not know. But how much time are you spending to put yourself in a position to know? So when the opportunity presents itself, you can share. And not have, you know, not put that that limitation on yourself, um, you know, because you just don't know how how having a conversation with somebody here it is you trying to tell somebody about Jesus. And here it is you trying to tell somebody about obeying the gospel and t t teaching them about doctrine and um, or having a conversation with them. And then they ask you a question and, and you're just not prepared. And it's actually a simplified question like is baptism essential for salvation? If you're not ready to speak on this and you have access and knowledge to uh, information to put yourself in position to be prepared, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're not you're not you're not sharing the gospel. So here's this person, this nobleman had an opportunity while uh, not, no, the servant had an opportunity while the nobleman was gone and out to to multiply what he had received. But he did not nothing with it. He put it in a napkin. And he acknowledged that that he 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 did it because he was he feared, you know, uh, he, he of what what would happen if he if, if, if he wasn't able to do what needed to be done with it. He already acknowledged that he 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 um, he, he knows the type of person that the nobleman is, but yet he still decided not to do what the nobleman said. 
you know, how many of us have access to information and knowledge and know what we're supposed to do with it, but because of our fear, we won't do nothing with it or put ourselves in position to better ourselves to do something with it. I'll open up. I'll open it up for any questions or comments. Brother Kennedy, good teach. Oh, go ahead, brother Javier. I'll let Javier go. Go ahead, brother Henry. I, I just wanted to say, great teaching, brother, brother Kennedy. Uh, you know, it just reminds me also when it comes to the man that he had uh, wanted to build bigger barns. And God said this day your life will be taken, you know. And so he just reminds me of someone that is similar to uh, the rich man. Uh, and he had plans, but God had other plans at the same time on what he was going to do with his soul. Because he, he wasn't putting God first in his life uh, when it comes to uh, doing his will. And so when it comes to our life and how we walk and the treasure, the talents that we have, we have to put him first. And we have to multiply. We can't hide the talent. It has to be multiplied and be added. Um, so this is what God gave us to do uh, under the sun. It's a short time frame under the sun. Then we turn back to dust. But, uh, you know, to know God, to know his son and his, his kingdom it is a blessing. The world sees it as something that's it's an offense or they're ashamed of the gospel or his son. And he's going to be ashamed of them at the, at the uh, judgment. And so. A great lesson, brother. I just wanted to bring out that, that gentleman where he wanted to build bigger barns, uh, but God had other plans. We just have to make our plans uh, and put him for God and put him first when we wake up and when we uh, go to sleep as we walk daily. So a uh, great lesson, my brother. Um, David, I see you got your hands up. Hey, hey family, how we doing? Uh, no, so great lesson, brother, great lesson. I was thinking while I was listening, you know, that story with the last uh, the last guy could be, you know, fear could be easily com uh, confused for laziness as well. You were speaking about uh, putting yourself in a, in a position to, to, to get knowledge or learn things. That way you can be in a position to, to share or uh, be a help to someone. Um, and you can hinder yourself by being lazy and call that fear. That's what I wanted to share. No, absolutely. You're no, correct. Um, and, 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 you know, what's, what's interesting is that, you know, if you look at it this way, because our bosses at our job pay us and we physically see the earnings of what hits our account when we get paid, we fear and we do what they tell us to do. You know, we do what they tell us to do because we know that we get paid. And if we don't do what they tell us to do, we most likely will be reprimanded or we will be fired. So we fear them and we do what we say they're going to do. But here, you know, for those who profess to be Christians or for those who, you know, say that the Bible is the authority when it comes to biblical questions or biblical teachings and, and and principles and things that we're supposed to obey when it comes to that we don't we don't have that same approach we don't have that same level of fear so we don't put ourselves in position to you know to 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 study because we we don't look at it we 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 play around sometimes and we look at it from a standpoint of saying well I got time on my side um I think brother Stevenson has said this you know a while back uh he said something to the effect of um, you know, um, I, like I got time. So, you know, when I'm ready, I'll, I'll, I'll do this right now. I'm not ready, you know, to people who, 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 uh, who he's maybe um, expressing the gospel to teaching them the gospel and, and they'll say, oh, I'll come to church when, when I'm ready. I'm not ready right now. I got too much going on, you know, but it, it, you're talking about your soul which is the most valuable thing. When we read the, the, you know, the parables of the, of the loss, and we talked about the lost sheep and we talked about the 99 and the hundred. And then we, um, we transferred from that to, it was the, uh, the coin, you know, and we talked about the value of the coin, you know, what is the value of your soul? You know, if you if you truly value your soul and, 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 and you believe what it is that you're reading in the Bible, then, why we can't have that same approach that we have towards our our bosses at work who pay us not understanding that 
we get paid as well. You know, I will, I will pay, you know, if you're in the kingdom, your, your reward is, is, is heaven is everlasting life. But we don't look at it that same way. I've seen Brother Stevens. So I think you had your mic unmuted. I was, yeah, I was just going to uh, make sure that we understand that as we read this parable that the same amount, brothers and sisters, was given to each, each of these individuals, these servants in this kingdom. If you're in the church, you ought to know what you did to be saved. Everybody ought to know. If you're in the church, you ought to know that it's important that you hear, believe, repent, can, and confess and get baptized. All of us have that same message, and we need to share it. That is, that is the birth of the gospel. That's the seed to get people in the kingdom of God, their son, the gospel. Now, if you notice, every servant, as was read in verse 16, notice what they, what they said about the pound. Who did it belong to? In verse 16, they say, your pound. In verse 18, when he came to the second, he said, your pound. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is your pound. The, the gospel, brothers and sisters, belongs to God. That's what I'm, I'm hoping we see. The seed, the power is in God's word. We have God's spirit. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He didn't give you and I a spirit of fear. Please understand that. If you know what it takes to be saved, you believed it, you're now saved. You need to share that message because the gospel belongs to to God. That's who it belongs to. This is why when Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I want to look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, brothers and sisters, our job is just to plant and water. That's it. Our job is to plant and water. This guy's problem, this last guy that we're talking about, his problem is he really don't know God. That's the problem. When you and I don't do what we're supposed to do, we have a, a unhealthy fear of God. Because if he really knew God, he would have got the work like the other two. That's just all to it. And you can be in the church all day long, but, but I'm going to tell you something. You, you got to grow, brothers and sisters. When you really know God, you get to work. You don't have that kind of fear. That's not the kind of spirit he's given us. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 5 through 8, listen to what he says here. What Paul is saying to Christians in Corinth. We heard it a million times. He said, who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord, now did this, even as the Lord gave to every man. So God has given every man an, a, an individual to share the gospel with him. That's just the end of it. If you're a member of the church, it's because some man came to you, some human being explained the gospel to you, which is what you and I should be doing as well. He says, I've planted Apollo's water, but here you go. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything. I'm nothing. Neither he that will water it, but God that give it the increase. And so we have to understand that. Look at verse eight. Now he that planted and he that water it are one. And every man shall receive his own reward, just like we just read in the, in the, in the parable, according to his own labor. You see that? According to what you do with it. And so when you look in Revelation 21 and verse 8, you read it in your own leisure, the first uh, characteristic that's mentioned of being thrown into hell is the fearful. The fearful. Because fear and faith, brothers and sisters, cannot go hand in hand. They don't walk together. Hey Amen, um, Brother Stevenson. Appreciate those comments. Um, Okay, verses 21, 22 through 28. Um, who did I have? I had Sister Denise do that. Um, Walter, Brother Walter, can you do that? Are you able to do that? Um, he doesn't have any audio, my brother. He oh, doesn't have any audio. His audio hasn't kicked in. Sister, Sister Hernandez, Sister Hernandez, I see that you're on. I'm, dri I'm driving, brother. Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, Sister yeah. Hernandez, are you able to read uh, verses 22 to 27? Yes, brother. And he said unto him, Our thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an, uh, I can't pronounce the word, outer man, Austrian man, taken up that I laid not down and reaping that 
I did not so. Wherefore, then give it not doubt my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own wit or sorry. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they say unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. For I said unto you that unto everyone which hath which have shall be given, and from him that had not, even that he have shall be taken away from him. But those but those mine enemy which will not that I should reign over them, bring hated and slay them before me. Continue. Amen, sister. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, and it's so, so we see, so first he goes, he goes into, he, again, we get an acknowledgement of, in verse 22, of uh, thou knewest that I was an austere man, which is to say, you know, I'm, you know, extremely firm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm severe and, 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 and strict. I'm a, I'm a strict individual. I'm a firm individual. You know how it is. I, I, I look at it from a standpoint of how like, uh, you know, for the most, everybody knows for the most part, I'm, you know, retired from the military. And, and, you know, when you're given an order, when you're given a, uh, a, 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 com a command to do something, you know, that, that command, that order has the, a firmness to it there's no you know you have a left and right limits you know the, the the nobleman didn't tell them you know how to invest it he didn't say you know go to these stores or go here he didn't tell them in the manner he just told them to go do it and that's what they were supposed to do just like in, for us in the military we're sometimes we're given the leeway to accomplish the mission but it's like hey this is what i want to get done i need you to go do this and when you know who it's coming from um, you go and 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 you know the individual and you know that person is strict and firm, you're supposed to take heed to what it is because you know by not doing it, there come consequences. So one of the consequences that we see immediately taking place is that what was his is no longer his. It is dispersed. It is given away. So it's like, okay, well, if you can't do nothing with what I gave you, then I'm going to take it from you and I'm going to give it to somebody else who's willing to and and, and has shown the capability of, of not only doing what I said to do, but also multiplying it because that means you had no faith. Now you didn't have no faith in yourself. You didn't have no faith in, you, you didn't, you didn't uh, uh, revere me to know that, okay, by not doing something, I'm going to punish you. So you know that I would get mad. You know that I'm strict. And you know that by not doing this, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be frustrated, mad um, at you. So you rather just do nothing, and you figure by doing nothing that the the punishment will be lesser, but it's actually more severe. I'm only not only am I taking it to away, I'm dispersing it and I'm giving it to the others, and you're watching me do this. You know, for I say unto you that every that unto everyone which hath shall be given, and from him that have not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. So it's to say, you know, you had this, <laughs> you know, and I'm taking it away from you because not only did you not do nothing with it, I'm going, I'm going to show you how by giving it to somebody else um, that, 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 that that's going to, it's going to, it's going to, I'm going to prove my point. So you have had it, people that had it, they was able to do something with what they had. Now you who also had it, did nothing with it so i'm going to take it away from you and give it to those who had and and that to me is a reflection of okay brother stevenson just laid out how you know we all know what we did to obey the gospel you know if you ask everyone here uh, uh how did they obey the gospel and you know they 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 did the hear believe repent confess and and, and was baptized live faithful it's something that we have to continue right so then that is something that you should be easily able to share with somebody, okay? And, you know, by doing that, you're in the kingdom. But we have to continue doing some things while we're in the kingdom. He just said that we have to continue to grow. We can't stay in our state. You know, we have to mature. 
you know, and, and, and by doing so, we'll better prepare ourselves when we're sharing the gospel, sharing the information to have those deeper conversations. So when I look at this and I say, OK, don't get comfortable with what you have. Don't get comfortable with what you have. Just because you're in the kingdom don't mean that that we know that it ain't once saved, always saved. Just because you have access don't mean that now that you have access, you can be comfortable and just sit by and say, you know, well, I'm here. I'm going to show up to church on Sundays. You know, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go to Bible study. Uh, Brother Stevenson always say this um, oftentimes, you know, these 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 sessions is, and stuff that we do, you know, they they they're great and all. You know, they're good for, you know, uh, studying and, 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 and putting yourself in, in position to to have a deeper understanding of what thus says the Lord. But there's more that we have to do as 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 brothers and sisters in Christ and never get comfortable feeling that because you're in or because you have something. Never get comfortable because you currently have something that you don't need to do nothing with what you have. And 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 so I took that from there. I open it up for any questions or concerns or comments. You know, one more comment on this, and uh, is is I want us to know that what he did is he violated in verse thirteen, brothers and sisters. Verse thirteen says, and he called his ten servants to deliver them ten pounds. So he gave it to them and said unto them, "Occupy till I come." That's the commandment. So when you don't do nothing, as this last servant did, you violate the commandment. God expects you to do something with what he gave us. And that's the point. And when you don't, you're wicked. Any other comments or questions? If not, can I get, Brother Green, can I get you to read, if you're, um, if you're able, verses uh, 28 through 33. Yes, sir. Um, verse number 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he had come nigh to Beth, uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye into the village over against you in the which at you are entering, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon yet never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And Actually, brother, they, brother Green, can you continue on to verse 35? Read yes, sir. 35. Yes, sir. And they that uh, were sent, went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owner thereof said unto them, why loose ye the coat? And he, and they said, the Lord have need of him. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. You want me to keep going, brother? No, no, that's 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 good. Um, David, we're in um, Luke 19. Um, we just finished reading 28 uh, through 36. Um, verse 38 through 36. And and look, this this all this is doing is proving that everything that Jesus said that was going to happen is going to happen. You know, oftentimes we saw, um, you know, there were times where Jesus would be um, doing works and miracles. And he saw that the Pharisees and, 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 the, uh, and, and the scribes or the, and, or the Sadducees were plotting and they were trying to kill him. And he would say, you know, the son of man, you know, he would, he would do what he needed to do and he would move on. Cause he said, it was not, it would, it would be not destined for me to die here. This is not where, where I'm supposed to die. You know, he told his, 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 uh, his apostles, um, he was telling them how, you know, once they made the, uh, the, the confession of, you know, he is the Christ. And he told them that, uh, 
you know, that I will give you the keys to the kingdom and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And when Peter made that, um, that confession that Jesus was the Christ, but then he charged them not to say nothing because he immediately after that, what did he tell them? He said it is, you know, he, he told them that the son of man is supposed to, you know, die and he's going to be buried and he's going to be resurrected. And, you know, he told them all these things and then he charged them and told them, he said, Hey, don't tell nobody this because what he didn't want to happen was by, by by if they started telling people these things was going to happen then what would happen is they won't do it because they'll say oh man no we can't kill him because he's saying we're supposed to kill him so they'll do the direct opposite he wanted things to flow in the exact manner where they were supposed to flow so when it starts off and it tells us that he's drawing nigh you know it's getting closer he's getting near you know to where he needs to be here he is um as he enters jerusalem um you know he 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 is giving his his the two uh something to do and he's telling them everything that's getting ready to take place you know go into the village um over against you in verse 30 in which you are entering and you will find a coat tied wherein you never met man loose loose him and bring him to me and if someone asks you tell them that i i need it that the lord needs it this is why you're taking it and then what happens when they go when they go there and they 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 were sent their way and found even as hell that said unto them, and as they were loosing the coat, the owner came out and said unto them, Why are you loosing it? And they said, What the Lord needed. <laughs> so it was everything that Jesus is saying. This is to show us that Jesus was always in control. He was always in control. Nothing that was happening wasn't happening because of happenstance, it was happening because he knew it was going to happen. All this is proven that it is a continuation of who he's saying he is, he is. And, you know, it's it's a shame because there were many places, you know, as we were reading in previous chapter, where we knew that the people wanted to, wanted Jesus not to leave, not because of the 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 wisdom and the things that he was providing it was because of the healings and the feeding they wanted what they can get from jesus not what he was actually coming to give them and the pharisees they were always asked for a sign you know even even in on the cross they wanted a sign they would take take yourself down for you you know it, it is said that you know if you be the son of god that you have charge over legions of angels so cast down your angels so that way you can be cast down on this. and and even then you know they always Always wanted some type of sign but they would never see the signs that jesus would 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 show them all the miracles and all the prophecies that was being fulfilled they would never see those and then even right now as he charges to to go into the village to do his bidding you know everything that he's saying um is happening i open it up for any um comments no questions All right, we got no comments or questions. I'm going to finish out uh, verses 37 um, through 48. Um, and verse 37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes for the day shall come upon these that thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee on every side. And they shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein. And them that brought, saying unto them, it is written, my house is the house of prayers, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chiefs of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do 
for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So um, before, before I open it up to any um, comments or questions, um, as we close uh, um, chapter 19, you know, you know, it starts with, you know, this is a victory. You know, this is this is this is this is a a a triumph opportunity. Here you have Jesus, uh, disciples. You know, they are and they they just they 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 can't believe the things that they witness. They can't believe the things that they have experienced over the time of of of, of being um, with Jesus. So they're just they're just happy and they're you know they're rejoicing. You know, and they're and they're saying, "Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord." And 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 again. Uh, I, I I just finished saying this. The Pharisees continue to just miss everything. They were so blinded by their by their hatred, not wanting to lose power, not wanting to lose influence that they just couldn't see who they had at their presence. So it went from 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 the praises to Jesus, you know, from the, the, the disciples just just thanking God and saying, bless it, you know, be the king that come into the name of the Lord, you know, just being happy um, and um, to, to have witnessed all the things that they whip, um, wept to Jesus now weeping over Jerusalem because he's like, wow, y'all just missing it. Y'all can't get right. It's, it just is um it's amazing how y'all can like y'all seeing all these things that that's that's taking place y'all are around nothing uh, here's what we got to understand it would be one thing if Jesus were doing a lot of his his miraculous works undercover uh I think brother I remember brother Stevenson was talking about um a matter of fact I saw it on one of the videos where he, you had one of the um uh, the blind brothers um uh you had one of him up there with you and 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 uh you i guess the guy that comes on before you you know he talks about he has the ability to to do that type of works and 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 you said man my my, my friend would love for you to be able to open up his eyes because he can't see and what did he say he said he would pray for him and he said you said no he, he can pray for him that brother can pray for himself you know and 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 that's that's how the pharisees eyes were to a lot of this they're blind they just can't see what is taking place jesus did nothing in the in the dark all his great works, all his healing, all the the healing, the lame, you know, the causing the blinds to see those who had uh, uh, leprosy, all that stuff was done in the open. And he did that. And they were concerned with, oh, you're healing on the Sabbath day. You know, it's almost like you, you know, uh, you, you doing you doing something good. And then only thing somebody could, could see is the negative that you ain't did. You know, that what they would, oh, you just, you're healing on the Sabbath day. You, you ain't got no cause to be, you, are you saying you the son of, of, of God? Are you, are, is this what you're saying? So they're worried about the wrong things. They've missed the mark this entire time. And it got so bad that Jesus weeps over them. And now he's, you know, he's, he's in a state where he's like, look, he said, it's <laughs> the bless. It's almost the blessing has passed you. <laughs> you you have missed the mark you've missed the opportunity you have more than enough opportunity and now the time's going to come where you know the the things that that you wish you would have been a part of or the things that you wish that you could have seen and have you're not going to have it you know he, he tells them in verse 44 um and shall lay on ev um, thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Y'all, you know, I saw this and, and I was trying to uh, look at this in, 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 in different ways. But for me, I saw this and it was like when he said thou knewest not the time of thy visitation, you know, and and, and um, if I'm if I'm incorrect in this, um, please, somebody um, correct me. I was just I just looked at this as as an as as him just saying, like, you know, I was here. You just don't understand. You had the Messiah with you. And now comes a time when I'm not going to be here. And you have missed your blessing. You have missed what was what was upon you, what, what you could have been receiving, what you could have understand. You know, uh, uh, Nicodemus understood. He understood the, 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 the mark. He was a Pharisee, you know, and when he had his conversation with Jesus, he could have easily been blinded as just as they were. But, you know, he he understood as as Jesus was 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 teaching and and Jesus was was showing he he understood the mark um, 
of 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 the things of what what was what was to come and what he came here for you know he acknowledged him um you know when 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 you see a difference between how Nicodemus acknowledged Jesus versus how the Pharisees would acknowledge Jesus when they acknowledge the other Pharisees they would acknowledge him and it would be more sarcastic you know uh when Nicodemus did it you know he 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 acknowledged but he came with with, with it was a following behind it master you know, we know you be a man of God because no one can do the things that you did unless God be with him. You know, the Pharisees would be would be more trying to catch him in something. Uh, Master, is it OK to heal on the Sabbath? They were trying to just ask him questions to to trap him because their whole goal, their whole intent was to find the perfect opportunity to kill Jesus. That's why in verse 48 verse 47 to 48 and it says and he taught daily in the temple um but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive um to hear him so they wasn't the opportunity and we know later on that they ended up doing it in the legal time which was at night time so i'll open it up at this time for any comments or questions Yes, uh, my brother, I'm glad you're addressing this. I want to go back to verses uh, 43 and 44 just to get a clearer understanding because I was, as I was reading this as well, I was trying to get, you know, is this Christ talking about um, when he comes back or was this referring to uh, the temple and everything being destroyed? So that's what I was looking at it both ways and trying to get a clearer understanding on which one was Christ referring to, because we know, I believe is in uh, the book of Matthews, uh, where he talks about, you know, he goes back and forth, you know, throughout that chapter talking about, you know, the temple being destroyed and so on and so forth. So I'm wondering, is Luke uh, saying a similar thing here in 43 and 44? Is this about the temple and everything being destroyed? Or is this referring to when Christ makes his return? That's my question. Yeah, so um when I when I read it, uh I I actually I have a note here in in regards to Matthew. Um so that's I looked at that that as as the temple, not as when he comes back. Um Brother Stevenson, if you have um um anything that's, to add to that. Yeah, no, that's right. He he's dealing with the, the destruction of the temple, which happens in AD 70. Remember, brother sister, Jesus is weeping over them. Because they think that they think that being Jews, uh, they think that the way they worship is is the way it's all, always going to be, you know. And and, and Jesus is, is showing that you no, know, you need me. You cannot get to God without me, you know. And and they they miss that as you you've been teaching so wonderfully, brother uh, Gilberto Kennedy. And so what Jesus knows is there's a day that's coming. Where all this that y'all doing, this temple, the way you worship, you're going to be surrounded by the enemies. That's what's going to happen. The Romans are going to come in and they're going to lay the temple waste. That's exactly what happens in AD 70. And, and Jesus already foresaw that coming uh, is going to happen. So he goes into the temple, just like he did at the beginning of his ministry. He does another second cleansing of this physical temple because their attitude and their hearts, they're, they're just not right. They have made his house a house, uh, a den of thieves, a place where they were just using it to make money, take advantage of people. And, and there's people like that today. Religion has always been, brothers and sisters, a system uh, for people to try to take advantage of other people. Well, just, that's just, it's just uh, uh, preach uh, Catholic church, preach purgatory, you know, pay your way into heaven, that kind of fooling. Uh, preachers today teaching tithe and offering, you know, just men who will stand up, women who will stand up and make the house of prayer a den of thieves, a place where thieves hide out. That's when he says that. You've made it a den of thieves. When he uses that language, where people who are thieves, I'm going to hide out in the church and rob them. And that's exactly what they're doing under the guise of this is how you get forgiveness from God. Bring your offering, bring this animal, bring that animal. We make exchanges and then God will forgive you. And they line their pockets up and God's not asleep, though. You know, God will deal with them. God will deal, deal with them just like he will deal with them in the temple. And he's going to destroy this temple, which 
was already prophesied about anyway, brothers and sisters. Yeah. So this is talking about AD 70. Uh, what verse was that real quick that uh, that Jesus cried over the, the disciples? What verse was that? Well, he's, you, you, you look at verse number, uh, verse number. Uh, 41. Verse number 41. 40. 41. And when he was come near, he, he beheld the city and wept over it. Verse number 41. Um, Luke 19, verse 41. So is he crying? Is he weeping over the city and or or the people of the city? The um, because it's you know, it it seems to suggest that Jerusalem is a sim symbol of the 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 second coming in a sense that the world will be destroyed, just like Jerusalem itself will be destroyed. But you're referring to the people of. Jerusalem. So I just wanted to make that clear that uh, you're referring to the people of Jerusalem. And it seems like, uh, so you're implying that because Jesus is weeping over the city, he's weeping over the, the people of the city. Is that what you're implying? Well, oh. if, yeah, oh. I, I, I would say both as well. Cause if you gotta, you gotta remember on the day of, on the day of Pentecost, um, you know, um, well, first, the, 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 the Pharisees they've been in this they've been a stumbling block this entire time. This entire time they try to to just you know deny Jesus the ability to do the things that he was doing. So they were always a thorn. Uh can, can you mute yourself real quick and then unmute yourself is is thank you. Um they, they were they were a stumbling block the entire time, you know, trying to 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 you know deny him from doing the things that he was doing and which was trying to was trying to make it hard and Jesus did what he came to do and he he was mission sending but if you can recall the day of Pentecost when um you know as as Peter is the one who's um um is preaching um uh, the gospel to the multitude and you know when you drop down all the way to about I think it's verse forty one and forty two you know when I look at that as and um, they that gladly received his words were baptized. Um, you know, that's 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 an indication of, you know, there were many that didn't. You know, it tells us that there were about 3000 that were added, but how many weren't at it? And, you know, so throughout this entire process, even even with the, the apostleship and them them continuing, you know, having the torch and they're they're doing the same thing. They were they're running into the same problems that Jesus was running into. And, you know, they all they all died in, in excruciating ways for for the cause. But, you know, when Jesus is weeping over them, he's weeping over them because, he you know, they had Jesus there with them. You know, uh, he he was there, and and because of the 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 Pharisees and 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 their their wickedness, you know, not wanting to lose their power and not wanting to to lose their their influence, you know, uh, they you can almost look at it as they are responsible. Even though we all have to work out our own salvation, we all are responsible for answering the call and obeying the gospel. Every individual. They were a stumbling block to some people seeing the truth. You know, they were they 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 were a holder of the laws, and they were because they were holder on the laws, it blinded them from understanding and seeing who if anybody was supposed to know who Jesus was, the Pharisees should have known who Jesus was. Because they had the letters, they 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 were holder of the laws, they should have known, but because of what they were feeling they was going to lose they were a stumbling block and couldn't see past their own ways so when i see jesus weeping over jerusalem i'm seeing he weeping over both of them I mean, he's he's weeping for both everybody there and 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 he's weeping over the city as well because he, he jerusalem was where uh where jesus told peter not to leave his apostles he told them don't leave jerusalem he said stay there and and you will be um uh, endued with power um, and then from there, they, you know, they'll um, deliver the gospel for the first time after the death, burial, and resurrection. So I'm hoping that answer, I don't know if Brother Stevens, they got something else to add to that, but um, I look at it as both.
Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else that you may have at this time? Anyone else? If not, I just want to thank uh, Brother Kennedy for a wonderful lesson. A uh, great teacher, my brother. Uh, also, I want to remind everyone this Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page, we'll have our uh, open forum. So if there's any questions you can't think of tonight, Saturday will be the time to bring them. Um, with that being said, once again, do we have anyone that has any questions, any comments, whether it's pertaining to tonight's study or anything else at this time? I mean, I want to ask whoever, uh, Samsung, did your question get answered? Samsung, I don't, who was that? That's that, that, was, that was me. Okay, no, I, I, I sort of, I, I sort of disagree that, that uh, the disciples. That's why that, I want to ask that, that, What part do you disagree? I don't think Jesus was weeping over the, uh, the, the people of that city. I think, I think Jesus was, Jesus was actually, uh, weeping over the the totality of the mentality of that city, not necessarily the spirit of that city. The spirit was an evil spirit, so to speak. The leadership, as, as Brother uh, Kennedy has said, the leadership had gone astray. And so once the leadership goes astray, almost every time, nine times out of ten, like with David and you, you saw with, with many of the other uh, scriptures, the followers, the members go astray. So the leadership is critical to getting it right. And because they did not get it right, that mentality, that mindset, that spirit of unrighteousness now settled on the city. And so I, I think that no. Jesus. Yeah, but here, here's what we got to read. No, here we hear what it says in the text, though. That, it says reading. God, he read he, over it, right? Right, over the, let's read it. It says, read over, and this is important we get this. He says in Luke chapter 19, uh, 24, uh, 1940, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Now, one thing, and when you put line upon line in scripture on scripture, what Jesus, no, they're not going to get it right. Jesus already knew that before he came. Matter of fact, when you look in Matthew 23 and verse number 38, see, it, it, there's no getting around and when Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Yeah, he was talking about his body. But also he knew that not one stone on that temple was going to uh, uh, be left the way it is. Jerusalem, that whole city from Jesus' ministry is going to be left desolate. Matthew 23 and verse 38, behold, your house. And he's talking to Jerusalem. Matter of fact, let's keep 37. Matthew 23 and verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kill the prophets, and stone them which are sent unto you. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall see, say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And so it's already prophesied that God is going to have this city of Jerusalem, the temple that they love, uh, which they believe God's presence dwelt in, it is going to be destroyed. And this is why when you get into chapter 24, we have to rightly divide how with, with age that Jesus is talking about, because there is definitely the enemies that's going to surround Jerusalem and the people there. This is why when you get to chapter 24, look what he says here in verse, verse number 15. I'm not going to read all this, but look at verse 15. When you therefore shall see See the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who's read, whoso read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, look what he says, flee into the mountains. Uh, let me mute your mind, Brother Dave. Let him that who is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his, uh, to his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that are gifts up in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. 
For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world, to this time no nor uh, uh, ever shall, shall be. And so he's dealing with when Jerusalem is surrounded. You know, he, he ain't talking about the end of the world in this case. It don't matter if anybody flies, flee to the mountains or not. Whenever Jesus comes back, ain't nobody going to be saved. And so he's dealing with there's going to come a time, Jesus already knows, that uh, Jerusalem is going to be surrounded uh, the people in Jerusalem are going to be surrounded and that temple and the people in it are going to be left desolate. And so he is weeping because he knows what lies ahead. And so the only hope people have is in obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, having your soul saved. That's what Jesus knows. But to hold on, and I'm, I'm hoping we understand, I, I think we understand this. Those are not God's chosen people over in the physical Jerusalem. We are the spiritual Jews today. Those who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem that came down from heaven on the day of Pentecost. We are spiritual Jews. That place, as far as God is concerned, have been left. It was left desolate in AD 70. And Jesus knew that was coming. And he was their only hope. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with that, Brother Stevenson. The only thing I can, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll further study it. But the only thing I can um, reference is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. In Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was asked uh, by God to find 50 righteous people, and then 40, and then 30, then 20, then 10. That was Abraham, okay. and he was requesting that of God. That was Abraham requesting okay. that of God. If he, if he could find that many in the city, God said, I would save it. Right. See, uh -huh. that's how I'm looking at that, that the the people of that city just like the people in Jerusalem made a choice so god destroys the entire city and remember uh, I, like i said i have to study it more because there's there's supposed angels it's a prophecy that angels guard some of the city and that the angels from in, in Sodom and Gomorrah came to, you said it was uh, Abraham. I thought it was Lot, but uh, my bad. Um, he, they came to him and asked him these questions. But God essentially looked at the city just like, um, and so, like I said, I have to study it more. I don't, I, I see that it can be implied that the people, but I don't think, I think Jesus, uh, God is meaning a higher spiritual thing in that. And I'm equating that with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So I'll study it more, brothers. But, so I, yeah, I'll brother, just, brother I'll Dave, just... bro, uh, uh, brother Dave, even with the comments that you're making, let's go back to verse number 38 in Luke 19 and look at what was going on. It says, saying, blessed be the king that comes cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So even everyone in Jerusalem was not wicked. And even when you look back at Sodom and Gomorrah, even though, yes, God destroyed the cities, but he did save Lot and, and his family. So even everybody there wasn't wicked. So so when you go back, even with the example that you're looking at, the you know, everybody wasn't destroyed. So that's why he, you know, Jesus was weeping for not just the people, but the city as well. Because like Brother Stevenson explained, he already knew that what Rome was going to come in there and do. You know, that's why I asked the question when you look at verses uh, 43 and 44. You know, was that talking about? Because like Brother Stevenson said, when Jesus come back, everything's gone. There's nothing that's going to be left when Jesus comes back. So just reading these scriptures, he said that in verse number 44, and, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave uh, in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. So they didn't know when Rome was going to come in there and do it. We it's, been, it's recorded when it happens, but they didn't know. It didn't say the, the end of the world or the destruction of the whole world, which we know is going to happen when Christ comes back. Because this, it's the similar language, like Brother Stevenson was showing a comparison with uh, uh, Matthew 24 that we read here in Luke 19 is similar language. That's all I have, brother. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut I'll, you off, brother. I'll, I'll just, I know you're fine. I'll just add this, um, you know, 
Jesus, Jesus came to save souls. The whole, the whole purpose, the whole purpose was, um, to, you know, lay the foundation, you know, prepare his, prepare his apostles for the work after he go up to heaven. And the, went with, with the knowledge and understanding of what was going to take place in Jerusalem. Um, and that was not only that's 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 not only the 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 ending, but also the beginning of the gospel um, being shared. You know, he knew what was getting ready to happen there. His concern and what he was weeping about was all the souls that was going to be lost. And you know, his his direct message was to the Pharisees. He's telling them this, and he's weeping over Jerusalem. Yes, but it's everything that entitles is the it's the city, it's the people. He ain't, he he's, he doesn't care about the buildings. You know, he know the temple is coming down, but he's saying, look, the way that you you the the the, the way that y'all are operating. See, y'all think that that is enough. That y'all think that that is y'all is gonna save y'all. But remember, the Pharisees they missed the boat this entire time. They had no they they didn't they couldn't grasp the concept the concept of of Jesus being the way. They couldn't grasp the concept concept of you know understanding that they're gonna have to listen to the teachings of the apostles after he is gone. So he knew he's weeping for them because he's saying there's gonna be a lot of souls that are being lost. And one of the main reasons a lot of souls is going to be lost is because of the of Pharisees and 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 them hindering people from accepting the truth with their teachings. And they were witnesses to everything that Jesus did. They were witnesses and they still missed the boat. So um yeah, I look I I I had to go over this a few times because you know I was I was I was I kept getting troubled um into figuring out what it was. But once I once I tied it into Matthews, it just made a little bit more sense to me um on what it was meaning. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not saying that the uh, people, the Pharisees were off base, uh, that the people uh, dis were destroyed. Some were actually good and some were not. I'm not saying none of that. Everything you guys said is true. My situation is that the, 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 the Bible is given to us and inspired for correction, for for doctrine, for instruction of righteousness that we, okay, so to me, if God wanted to write, and you know it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, if he wanted to write that he wept over the 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 the, the city people or the 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 the, the people that, that were disobedient or that, he would have wrote that. That's how I feel. And so, yes, it can be implied that, yes, God was upset with these people. But to, to me, the emphasis is on the city. So to me, the emphasis is on a higher spiritual or some other meaning there, which I have yet to study. But, but hold on, and we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. And I want you to study it, Brother Dave, but this is why you, we have to keep reading, because this will explain. Jesus okay. explains he read, that he's talking about the people. Because when you look at verse number 44, He's talking about what the enemies are going to do and shall lay you even with the ground. But he ain't just talking about that. He said, and shall lay you even with the ground. And he says, and your children within thee. He's talking about people. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. You see, so he's talking about both. He's talking about the city, the temple, and the people in it. When the enemy surround you, he's going to handle you who are in the city, people, your children, and the temple, because you knew not the time of your visitation. Yes, thank you for that scripture. That clears it up. Thank you. I appreciate it, Brother Stevenson. All right. Thank you, brothers. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for taking the time out. Uh, for coming and joining the study. And also, once again, I want to welcome our new brother in Christ, uh, Larry Smith. I see he signed out a little early, but if it be the Lord's will, he'll continue to come back and study with us. Uh, with that being said, do we have any prayer requests? Is there anyone that has any prayer requests? 
All right. If there's no prayer requests, once again, everyone, don't forget this Saturday, uh, uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page, we'll be having our open forum. And Brother Stevenson, I just want to ask if you're available Monday, if you'll be willing to take uh, Luke chapter 20. Okay, thank you, my brother. Go ahead, uh, Brother Walter. I see your hand. Yeah, uh, good evening, brothers. Uh, I'd like to uh, request prayer for me and my wife. We're heading down to Miami for this week, this weekend for four or five days, and I'd like for the brothers to pray for a traveling grace for us. Thank you. Most definitely, Brother Walter. Uh, you, you and Sister Williams gonna have to swing through Tennessee and snatch up me and Sister Green and, and take us to Miami with you. <laughs> I'm well, we just got kidding. Plenty, we got plenty of room. I'm just kidding with you, brother. God bless you. Hope you yeah. have. Uh, uh, we'll be praying for traveling grace. Is there anyone else? Appreciate it. All right. If there's no one else, then I'm gonna ask Brother Claude if he don't mind. Brother Claude, would you please close? Oh, brother, hold on, Brother Claude, one second. Uh, brother Jared, I see your hand. Yes. Uh, since it's on the last recording from the Bible studies, I I just would like to apologize to Brother Hanger, Brother Kennedy, and Brother Green for taking. Uh, I I I took what y'all said about. A last comment out of context, and I like to apologize. I was kind of doing the most on that, so said my apology. Oh, my brother, come on now. You 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 you, you asked for it. Yes, you have it since you asked for it, but no, nah, it's all good, my brother. It's it's nothing personal taken or anything like that, man. We're all here to help one another as much as we can. So, but uh I just thank you for your humbleness, my brother. And, 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 and God bless and, you, brother Jerry. Love you, brother you. Jerry. God bless you, soldier. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, look, brother Jerry, me and brother Jerry spoke right afterwards. And um and I told him, man, if you look, if you have questions, man, you ask it. And it's all everything is always love, you know, and, and, and you know, we all want to know the truth and we all want to get our questions answered. So I love you for that, man. And look, the fact that you even came back on here just to make sure that anybody else, you know, just shows where your heart is at. So all love. Hey, man. God bless you, Jerry. Do we have anyone else? All right, uh, Brother Claude, uh, if you'll go ahead and close us out with prayer, my brother. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy <clears throat> holy name. Father, we come this evening, we come when we praise, we honor, and we glorify your name. Father, we thank you for being with us this night. We thank you for the beautiful lesson that our dear brother explained to us that led us in the right path, Father. We thank you that you would keep him doing your will, praising your name, honoring your name wherever he has the opportunity. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for our brothers being able to understand their disagreements and being able to man up and acknowledge to keep your word and to understand your word and to praise your word. We thank you for them. We thank you for our dear brother Williams that is traveling. Father, we ask that you would keep him on a safe journey and return him to his home once again, Father, after visiting. But be with them and keep them safe. Keep your arms around them. Father, we ask that you would be with our sick. Now be with our shut-ins. Father, be with their providers and their caretakers, that they would administer the medication with love, respect, and honor for them, Father. We pray, Father, that your son, whom you loved, shared his precious blood for us, that we might have a right to the tree of life, Father. We thank you for that sacrifice. We thank you for that love, we thank you for that understanding. 
Father, and everything that we do and every move that we make, you know, you understand, and you help us, Father. Father, there are some of us with medical problems and physical problems. Do you know what problems we have, Father? And with your ability, being our creator, being our master, being our shelter, that to ease the pains that we go through. We also, Father, ask that you would be with our friends, our sisters and brothers who have lost loved ones who are mourning or still mourning them, Father. That you would feel that spot, that empty spot that was taken, Father. That love that they shared when they were with us. Oh, Father, we know that we need a lot of people through our travels and through our being here. And these spots are vacant when one of us has left. Father, we ask that you would continue to bless the families that lost loved ones. Father, we ask that you would touch our young ones. In some way and some how, that they will come to know you, come to understand you, and come to taste of you, Father. We pray, Father, for them. For they are to be somewhat of a dying generation of young people not knowing you. Oh, Father, please be with them, strengthen them. Be with their families, guide their families, guide their grandparents, their mothers, their fathers, their sisters and brothers. Father, guide us all. Father, we ask your blessings on everyone that's on this Zoom program tonight. That being on this program, that their lives may be better tomorrow and the next day. And that their light may shine brighter each day, Father. Having heard your words, having understand your words, having feeling your words, Father, we we thank you so much. And we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you in your son's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you for your prayer, uh, Brother Hanyer. I mean, I'm sorry, Brother Claude. Uh, thank you for that wonderful prayer. Uh, with that being said, and closing as always, may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Love you all dearly with the love of Christ. Until we meet again, if it be the Lord's will, good night, everyone. And saints, please continue to fight that good fight of faith. Good night. Good night, thanks. Good night. Good, night. good, good night. teaching. Good night. Good night. Amen. Good night. Good night. Brother Kennedy. Yes, indeed. Good teaching, Brother Kennedy.